quite a special all about the bass today actually because I'm reunited with my old partner. <laughs> oh, it's so nice to be here. It's a shame it's under slightly sad circumstances. Uh, uh, Skinny Lee uh, is not very well so he can't make it in today so you've got a uh, slightly overweight Lee instead. In case, in case you were just thinking there oh, old Lee Voss has put some weight on it since the last <laughs> video. It's not that Lee. It's a different Lee. But it but makes yes. it easy for me because I haven't got to remember a different name, so it's all right. Uh, I can work with that. So yeah, here I am, back, uh, doing bass videos. Well, assisting. It's a shame you haven't got your sort of DJ equipment like we used to well, have. I, but perhaps we will. I'm, this is a slightly last minute stand-in. If I have to do this again, I'll prepare. I'll bring some fat beats with me. If uh, you wouldn't mind. <laughs> that would be lovely, yes. So listen, today, what's the uh, what's on the menu? Well, look, I, sire basses uh, have been a... a um, a revelation in Anderson's, a real um, outstandingly popular line of uh, products for Anderson's. Uh, literally, if I'm totally honest with you, as, as someone that lives most of their life in the guitar department, mm. I think the bass department has always been kind of like for every one bass we'll sell, we're probably going to go and sell 50 guitars. And so I naturally kind of am drawn into that. Um, and then last year, Lee Voss and Stuart West, who are, you know, both keen bass players, mm. said, look, we really want to do this Sire thing. Because um, there's been a buzz about Sire for, for a, a couple of years now, hasn't Yeah, it? big buzz. Obviously, Marcus Miller, very well not respected. An electro not an electric yeah. buzz. <laughs> not that sort of Yeah, buzz. like a, a buzz of interest. Yes. Marcus Miller's been involved with these guys. They're, they're an affordable range of, of basses with some really, really cool pickups and fantastic value. Anyway. They were really affordable and fantastic value. Until now, <laughs> when they're even more. Because but this is this is just again. So, so Stu, Stu and Lee twisted my arm last year and said, "Look, can we can we put a bit of cash behind bringing some of these in?" And yeah. and, and it's another one of those deals where um, we buy the, the the base direct from the factory. So you know the quantities we have to buy in and the, the risk effectively we had to take on that first order is quite substantial. And da da da. However, I've never seen anything like it. I mean, I, I'm not talking like selling like half a dozen bases a week. I'm talking like selling hundreds a month. Right. And I'm, I'm like going, hello? Mm. It's like, where's this come from? Yeah. Um, and Sire's gone from uh, in like 2016, we'd never heard of it, to 2018, it's our best selling baseline. Maybe. So I'm like, happy days. Yeah. Um, and we've just met uh, Kyle, who's the, the, the brains behind uh, the whole thing. And hopefully we're trying to convince Kyle to come on camera in another video and you'll meet him maybe in another video soon. Um, and But the reason we've got these bases here is that there are some more, if it, if it even needed to be any more affordable, yes. which arguably it doesn't, oh. uh, it's pretty affordable already. We have the new V3 series, which is the sort of the more affordable version of what I'm holding here, V7. Yep. And we have M2, which is the more affordable version of the M series, the more contemporary one. So look, let's... Uh, Should we look at some differences between them? Can you, would you mind holding this one? I would not mind holding that. So currently Nathan was playing the five string yes. V3, but it's easier for us to show you the differences if we go to the four string. Of course. So. Let's start, where should we start? Should we start with the body? Body, yes, uh, on, the, on the new, uh, the V3, this is mahogany. Yep, and these were, uh, depending on the model you went for, either ash or alder, so mahogany. Okay, now on the, uh, the, the, uh, the V3, uh, the sort of new cheaper version, it's the same preamp, 
Which is crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Which is the, the real, that's the remarkable thing on these bases, people the preamp. Are, I think the word from, you know, Marcus Miller himself was kind of like, look, the, the, the preamp's probably worth 250 bucks on its own. Of course. <laughs> and the whole base is only like 250 bucks. It's mad. So yeah, exactly the same preamp on the V7 and the V3. Yes. However, uh, we have uh, different pickups. Like their standard series of pickup. Maybe what we'll do is we'll do a quick like doobie doo on this base and then doobie doo on oh, that sure base. Oh, sure thing, yeah. See if we can hear. tell the difference, yeah. So yeah, different pickups. Uh, we have different bridge. Yeah, there's a much higher mass kind of fat, badass style kind of bridge on this one. And that's a much more traditional sort of jazz bass style bridge on that one. Yeah, there are, uh, there's a small difference with the tuners. Yep, the, the Deera tuners are slightly higher ratio. Um, they, they just look a bit shinier. I don't know if that's like a good technical term as to for why they would be better. Uh, but yes, you've got slightly lower ratio tuners on the cheaper one. And while we're round here, uh, this, uh, the V3, has a satin finish on the neck. Now, I have to say, from my personal point of view, I prefer this the, as a feel. Yeah. I really like a satin. Yep. I mean, the, what, uh, what, are you, what are your preferences um, on a guitar, for instance? I, I, I've played both, and I think it's one of those things that there are way other things that I find make me like or dislike a guitar rather than what the lack or it, whether the neck is lacquered or not. Okay. I've never, I mean, personally, the, the, this, the, you know, the, the, the glossy of the neck, the kind of stickier it is for me. That's typically the feeling, but there are... Equally, as, you know, some people will argue that that by putting a, a, a lacquer on the neck, you that the neck becomes more resistant to changes in humidity, right. uh, perhaps makes it a bit more stable. Okay. Um, it does give it a different feel. Not necessarily that's not necessarily a good thing or a bad thing. It's just a different feel. It's personal preference, um, of course. Yeah. And of course, it is slightly more expensive to lacquer a neck than not lacquer the neck. So that hence the reason why it's more affordable not to. That makes sense. Uh, what you have got though, as an aesthetic is the headstock is still lacquered. So it's still got that nice shiny look on the bit that you can see, but not on the bit that you touch. Okay. Uh, again, aesthetically, the V7 had the block inlays and the bound neck. That's more of a sort of vintagey look, isn't it? Very 70s, like 70s kind look. of thang. And this is no binding on the neck and just dots, yep. dot inlays on the neck. But the, the neck profile and fretboard radius and things like that are the same on both bases. So, um, you know, overall the feel will be very similar okay um and the i mean you can see why these are so popular i mean 379 for the one with the bells and whistles yeah. is insanely good value yes until you go to this one yeah which is like less than 250 pounds yeah and then you just start going where does it end yes i mean it's true, it, it? we're just gonna we're gonna start giving them away i guess at some point aren't they the next the sire v1 that's just free with a bag of chips um, I mean, it's like that doesn't sound like a good business model. Probably not a good business but model. What but Toys R Us. It's just, it's just. I'm, I'm, honestly and truthfully, I kind of can't wait till Sire start making electric guitars. Ah. Which who knows? I don't know. I'm just saying. It's a rumor. Yes. It's a rumor. <laughs> um, but it, it, it's, it's amazing. So. Let's, let's do that side by side. Oh, of course, so the, the white bass that uh, Nathan was playing at the beginning is simply a five string version of, of this one. And there are several different colors, uh, which we'll put links in the description below. Um, beautiful bursts and various um, translucent finishes or solid yep. finishes, whatever you want, whatever floats your boat. Yep. Um, what can I say? Uh, uh, Rick, go and ju just go and read some of the reviews on Sire bases from actual owners, not from, you know, like, stores or anything go and read the owner reviews i've never known um i've never known like a a base be just so overwhelmingly popular mm. um we were plugging into of course the mark base marcus miller uh, signature head yes with, that seems like uh, uh, the millerizer button as i'm desperately trying to turn <laughs> nathan here into marcus miller uh, pretty much on maximum uh, to give him Maximum Marcus. Maximum Marcus's feel. Top Marcus. Top Marcus. Oof, see? Oof. Oof. I like what you did there. Play on words. What are you going to do? You're going to play something? Yeah, Nothing? no, we're, we're going to compare these two and just see if there's a massive difference. It's, it's going to be really hard, though, because this is such a versatile preamp. I mean... Set everything flat and just well, do a straight I AB? I think, yes, that, that makes sense, yeah. Okay. Because w with this preamp, uh, you've got a passive and an active switch. So kick the active in and then have everything on. Uh, have they got centre detente? Yeah, they things? have, they have. Detente, detente, detente. 
Yeah. So I feel like I feel like a Pitbull in a Jennifer Lopez video when I go de tom de tom de tom. I don't know why. It just reminds me of Pitbull. I don't, I've no idea what no, you're talking about. It's, uh, it's, how, I couldn't, how it's the one and only time in my entire life that I would ever might think that I might be Pitbull in a Jennifer Lopez video. <coughs> hey. Well, look, you know, this is you've got to aspire, you've got to aspire to something. Jennifer Lopez mainly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, you're going into the dark glass now. You're not going to be no, Marcus anymore. Yeah, I don't know why I did that. There you go. We're in that one. We're in this one? Yeah. But that's still plugged into that one. Yeah. These are these technical <sighs> issues that we have. What's, oh, yes, what I happens, see. What right, happens is there a mute on that? Mute that. You mute that. Right, so this one first. I'm just not used to working with old people anymore, Nathan. It's just <laughs> <laughs> amateurs. Old amateurs. I'm like a dinosaur, aren't I? It's shocking. Right, go on then. Let's try this for a bit. <clears throat> Mute, mute. <laughs> Unmute. Unmute. Now, a bit less output. Slightly cleaner and quieter. Right. A little bit less mid-range, I think. More, more, maybe Marcus Millery. You know, okay. It's more, I think more that kind of poppy, uh, funky tone. Right. The output thing is potentially something that could just be the pickup height. Right. Uh, I don't know. I, do you know what? As Kyle is sitting over there, I'm going to ask him, are, are the pickups slightly lower output? A little lower output? Right. Yeah. Tiny little bit lower output on the V... Seven than they are on the V3. Okay. Now this isn't a problem, you see, because all you do is you turn the gain up on yeah. your amp, so it yeah. doesn't make any difference. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't. You see, I think the output of the pickup is more to do with the tone. You know, so if you want, uh, you know, if you want to get lots of headroom out of your amplifier for that big, clean kind of sound, right? Uh, you obviously don't want the bass churning out a bucket load of output in the first place. Okay. And I think sometimes there's a certainly on the guitar. There's a there's a very sometimes slightly unpleasant transient attack on that real initial thing when the pickups just got a bit too much output right certainly on you know if you talk about strap pickups and lots of those like really really beautiful sounding uh clean tones that you get from a strap mm. they're, they're often either a very low output pickup or where the where the volume on the strap the player typically turns the the, the, the volume down by one notch just to remove that instant harshness. Yeah, I but mean... It doesn't sound <laughs> terribly different, does it? No, and also I think that's why you have a gain um, input on an amp, is, yeah. to, is to compensate for those things. No guitars are the same outputs or basses, you know, so yeah. that's why it's there. That's why the gain exists on your amp to, to make up hey, for that. You're, so, the, you're the professional, what do I know? Uh, um, so, sure. so that's the... Um, Little side by side comparison. Did, yeah. we, did we do enough of that? Would you like? To, did you want to sort of do a little like bit more and then go back to this one and then we can do a bit more on that one? Maybe okay. put it on the bridge pickup rather than because I think you're rolled all the way up to the neck, aren't you at the moment? Uh, no, I think we're, 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 we're on uh, uh, right exactly halfway between the two. Well, let's do it. Let's do a little bit of like front and back and light. Should we do a bit of passive? Yeah. Passive back pickup. That's true. Of course, on the passive mode, that should show off the difference between the pickups maybe most. Okay. Let's try that. So we're going to do passive, back pickup, uh, tone off. Okay. See if we get a nice sort of yeah. jacko sound out of oh, it. Okay. Yeah? yeah, let's try that. Mute, mute! I love being the glamorous assistant in these videos. Do you? It's awesome. Uh, right, I've got to remember how to, yeah, that, 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 that. Right, so, so exactly the same. So that, I, it's the same. It's, it's louder and honkier, yeah. isn't it? Louder and a bit more in the mid-range. Yeah. Um, so what's it like? Just an experiment. Let's go back to that bass, right? You turn the gain up and see if we can 
Can it, does this clip nicely, this amplifier? Then? Let's, just, sort of... let's try and see what happens. Okay, sorry, Pete, this might get uh, a bit dirty. Uh, do you know what? I'm going to turn the old No, don't school... leave it. No, 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 okay, leave it. Stop fiddling about. Sorry. Just the game. Just sorry. the game. Sorry, sir. Sorry. You're still on passive Mute. mode? Passive. Still yeah, yeah, exactly the same. It's you, we've just got the amp on the edge of that kind of like it's like it's got it's more grunt than distortion, isn't it? So so turn the gain down again. Down. I yes. Just wanted to do an AB. What? Which one is this? That's the cheaper one. Oh yeah, no, it's right. Yeah. Up then. I saw it's the same as it was before. <laughs> Yeah, that's you see, that's getting there now. Yeah. You turn the gain up, it's compensating for that thing. I'm getting the same sort of tone. Okay, so what you've uh, we've just been told by uh, Kyle is that the, the V3 was sort of intentionally voiced to be a bit more of an all-rounder in terms of its tone and perhaps a bit more capable of doing uh, if you like less Marcus Millery kind of tones, you know, it's a bit, it's a bit happier playing in sort of like more rocky sort of vibe. Right. Uh, the V7 is very much tuned to be like the, the Marcus Miller kind of um, soul funk pop kind of vibey. Okay. Uh, I don't, you know. Well, it's, let's, it's, I'll tell you what we should also do, right? Mm. Now we've got this bass back in here. Let's have a fiddle about with it. I'll, I'll play, yeah. and you start. Uh, twiddling with me knobs, you know, like in the old days, in the old, the old days. days, like can you I, used to do. Can remember? I just say, I, I mean, I'm still, I'm, st I'm still slightly staggered that we are able to go into such professional detail. Yes. On a bass that's going to cost you 200. It's probably like your first bass money. Uh, it's, no, <laughs> you know, it's it, like, absolutely. Of course it's, it is. Yeah. It's insane. Yes, it's it completely is. insane. It is. Um, but you know, yeah, that, that's that's where we are. Wow. Right. Come on then. Huh? The world is changing. The world is changing. It's going to hell in a handcuff. And <laughs> absolutely. Right. So and listen, uh, let's uh, well, stick it on active, and then you show the guys what some of this You'll active have to remind me. So what have you got here? So that, I don't even know passive. what you've got. Yeah. That's active. Yeah. Uh, and then you've got uh, bass. Oh, parametric mid, mid range. Yeah, parametric treble, mid. And that's the balance. Treble. Is it? That is your pickup balance. Oh, and that's your volume. That one and and that is an overall tone. And that, oh, okay. that that still works with the active in as well. Right. So uh, you can mess about with all of that stuff and uh, yeah, just try and show the guys well, I sh I what you're shall. doing. I'll try and I'll try and not obscure the camera angle if I can as well. well. So come on then, let's go. Let's no, so just, it's active is on, obscure. right? Active is on. On. Let's do it. Let's do it. Start well, playing. Do you, do you want to do it passive first? Or do you just no, go just go straight active? active. Let's go. Go on. It's like you can make it super bassy, super bright, super honky, super well, th th smooth. This is the benefit of this, this uh, you know, this 18 yeah. volt active preamp. This is this is what creates all the tone, and it's just so flexible. Mm. You know, how, yeah, there was so many videos where we do, you know, sort of reissue jazz basses and pre basses even more so. They just got one one sound. Now, yeah. if that's the sound you're after, yeah, fine, that's brilliant. But if you want a flexible bass, this is so much more useful. I, you know. I, I, again, whether whether you're starting your journey out as a bass player and thinking, you know, what would be a good amp, a good bass to buy? You think one of these and a little 
you know, Fender Rumble practice. Well, this is amplifier. an absolute no-brainer. If you're telling me that this is sub 250 quid, then it's, it's, forget it, man. I mean, it's it's, it's, it's got to be either this or the only other bass that we've tried that sits in this kind of price bracket and, again, is, is pretty uh, fantastic value for money is the little Ibanez SR. 200 isn't it whatever they it are good they are which good is, which even that i think is a, is like 50 odd pounds more expensive than this and isn't anything like a sonically versatile I, I think the difference there is that's a, it's a very modern looking bass mm. and mm. um a lot of the time people don't want that i know it's a kind of a fashion yeah. thing yeah, yeah yeah but um you know i think there's there's something to be said for this real nice sort of vintage look but that this a hundred percent you know this is this doesn't feel like a bass that you couldn't go out semi-professionally with does it i mean it just feels like a perfectly i'll go out, i'll go out and giggle this no problem at all full professional well, yeah you know <laughs> well talking of <laughs> talking of that contemporary bass and that kind of vibe where maybe yeah. just visually you're going oh, jazz bass is really not the vibe for the band that i'm in yeah um i don't know maybe you're in some sort of metallica tribute band well, whatever, and you're sort of thinking oh that's that's too uh, too obvious and you want something a bit more contemporary. Well, you just so, don't want something that's, that, that looks yeah. like a jazz bass. So this is the M series. Like the, the V series, there, there is a more expensive version of this with you know other features. We didn't bring a, one of the Dera M series up with us, but we've reviewed those in the past. And this uh, is the same money as yeah. that, right? Sub 250. Right. Again, remarkable value. You've got the same preamp. Indeed. Okay, and the slight difference with this is, of course, we've got the humbucking pickups. Yep. Two of, yep. which are uh, you know rem reminiscent of a, a Stingray or something like yep. that, with that style of pickup. It looks like the same bridge, just in a different colour. Uh, flip it over a second. Different tuners, so these are the enclosed tuners rather than the open gear tuners, but same neck. Is it, is it uh, a different neck feel or same neck? It's a more modern feel. It is. Yes, it's a, it's a, um, it's a flatter neck. It's a flatter neck and a slightly sort of uh, a narrow, uh, a sort of thinner profile. Yeah. So yes, more like your, the modern Ibanezes and Yamahas. Let's just turn um, it up then. Do, 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 the, the thing I really like about this though is that it's got 24 frets. Ooh. So if you know, you know, you can sort of get up this end. Actually, that's, that's, yes, that's we're just we're getting a bit of spec on screen now. Uh, so as with the uh, V3, you've got some different colours that you might like on this. There's a cool white one, and you've got this sort of black one here with the revealed binding. There's a blue one which looks rather nice. Uh, and there are four string and five string versions again. I should mention actually, we talk a lot about it being sub 250. Uh, the five string won't be. The five string will be a little bit dearer. Yeah, but um, it's yeah, but it's. I think that is sub 300. 300, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so still got mahogany body again here. Um, Rosewood board, uh, maple neck. Uh, as we mentioned, you got the humbucking pickup. So, and just it's just stylistically very different, isn't it? It is very different. Yeah, but, you know, maybe that's what somebody's after. Have I muted you? I apologise. There we go. We're on. Sounds great, man. Woo! Okay, that's the active. Yeah. There's the active in there. Get that mid on. A honky bit of mid in there. It's all right, isn't it? Yeah, it sounds cool. Yeah. What do you say? It's got, um, you know, for me, like the, the famous, the famous bass with humbuckers is the Stingray. Yeah. Uh, would you say it's got more of a sort of like that punchy vibe, less, what's the, how, you know, less kind of maybe. Smooth? Well, it's it's a kind of round. Tone, I think, with the stingray, mm -hmm. isn't it? I, I, I would describe it as that. Would you agree with well, that? Well, I'd, I'd probably choose another word that bore no resemblance to a tone either. I'd, I'd probably go something <laughs> like, you know, I don't know, elliptical or I don't know. Uh, <coughs> I don't know not not quite, quite round. Not quite round, you know, or, or oval. oval. <laughs> I think that's what we're saying. <laughs> Why don't, uh, why don't you do the same thing, man? Why don't you have a little okay. back down here? I hope everyone's enjoying having me back in the bass videos, you know, well, add, add, adding next to nothing other than perhaps a bit of glamour. Um, but <laughs> hopefully Lee Voss will be well soon and I he can I come did back. try and get him to do it in a bikini, <laughs> but you wouldn't have it. I haven't waxed today, that's the problem. <laughs> well, probably just as well then. That's uh, <laughs> awful. <laughs> right, go. Let's do something. <laughs> adding 
bridge pickup with the mid-range wound in goes way more like boosh than yeah. the uh than the jazz bass one does yeah. good rock bass i would have thought that yeah one, you know like yeah nice eh so look there you go chaps that is the v3 i believe these will be in the shops uh in april uh and one suspects this will be even more popular just based on the price than the v7 well I, yeah, um, I really think so, so yeah. i don't know Far be it from me to try and sell you something like this, but perhaps you might want to get your orders in a bit pronto. Um, yeah. Have you got lots coming? I think so. I think it's, you know, uh, we obviously try to anticipate the demand. I, I would have thought it's in the hundreds rather than I think the dozens. demand's going to be pretty big um, for these. Because for the money, uh, you know, it just can't be beaten, I don't think. I, I, I think we're going to we're going to go out there with that, aren't we? Is there a better base on the market than that for 250 or 240 pounds? It's, if it's, there is, let us know. It's, it's hard to see. But yes, as always, you, the consumer is king. So you can comment in the video section below uh, about what you think. But honestly, I said hand on heart, I think the best thing that you can do is just go and find a forum where sire owners are talking about their experiences. Because mm. I said, all I know is that uh, we have seen an immense amount of love for this brand. Yeah. Um, so there we are. Thank you very much. I nearly called you Marcus for a minute there. I'm so <laughs> Marcus Millard up. Marcus Kings. Um, Mar <laughs> yeah, that's a different uh, <laughs> relation. Um, but no, thank you so much for inviting me back, Nathan. Uh, apologies, Lee Boss. I hope you're feeling well soon. I'm just keeping the seat warm for you. Ooh, uh, that's ooh, strange. Well, yeah. <laughs> all right, fair enough. <laughs> anyway, on that bombshell. See you uh, later. Thanks, Bye, Pete. Guys. Cheers. Yeah, nice one. See you next time. <laughs> bye bye. bye. Hey everybody, thanks for watching the Andertons Guitar YouTube channel. If you're a drummer or a keyboard player or interested in music technology, you might find one of our other channels interesting and I'll put details of those in the description below. If you want to find out more about the products we've just featured, please click here. If you'd like to buy a t-shirt like this, please click here. If you want to watch another video on our guitar channel, click down here. And to subscribe to our guitar channel, click here. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.